On June 8, 2013, the New York Mets and Miami Marlins played a baseball game so terrible, so frustrating, so boring, I question whether both teams attempted to actually win. What started out as a great matchup everyone was looking forward to turned into something more sinister, a twisted, cynical version of baseball. This is the most frustrating game ever played. The Mets and Marlins were not worth watching this season. Both teams were well on their way to a losing season, with the Marlins having the worst record in all of MLB at the time of this game. Neither team had a winning record since 2009 and, including 2013, both teams combined for one playoff appearance in the past 10 seasons. Their preseason expectations were low and their season performance reflected that. Despite both teams being terrible, there was a reason to watch this game. The pitching matchup. The Marlins sent out Jose Fernandez to pitch while the Mets starred Matt Harvey. These two were among the best pitchers in baseball that season. Fernandez ran away with the Rookie of the Year award voting that season and placed third in Cy Young voting. Harvey started the All-Star game and finished fourth in Cy Young award voting. At the time of this game, they were both seen as young, upcoming elite pitchers. Possibly the two next big aces in baseball. With both of them pitching in the National League East, there were expectations for these two to face each other many times throughout their careers, fighting each other for best pitcher in the division. My, how things can change so quickly. To wrap up what I just said, this game featured two really bad teams, but both starters were up and coming stars, so this matchup was a must see for baseball fans. What you'll learn is that, as the game goes on, it gets worse and worse and worse. Harvey pitched the 1-2-3 first inning to start the game. Fernandez allowed a couple of base runners in the bottom half, but struck out Marlon Byrd to end the inning. Harvey blinked Miami again in the second, and in the bottom half of the inning, the Mets struck against Fernandez. Center fielder Juan Lagares doubled in Ike Davis to put New York up 1-0. That'd be the only run the Mets could score off Fernandez that inning. After both starters exchanged a scoreless third, the Marlins tied the game against Harvey. Two singles and a sack fly by Chris Coughlin made the score 1-1. One one. Aside from the one run apiece, both pitchers were dealing. In the bottom of the fourth, Fernandez came within one foul ball of an immaculate inning. He and Harvey were matched up through four, showing near perfect dominance so far. In the top of the fifth, the Marlins had two on with two outs and Juan Pierre at the plate. The Marlins hadn't done much offensively yet all game against Harvey. Needing a hit, Pierre took a fastball back up the middle. Rookie and future Gold Glove winner Juan Lagares threw a perfect throw to catcher John Buck to get a Denny Hanchevarria out at home plate to end the inning. A terrific defensive play from the outfield to keep the game tied at 1. Keep that in mind for later. Fernandez threw a 1-2-3 bomb of the 5th against the Mets, as did Harvey in the top of the 6th. More of the same continued. Fernandez threw a scoreless bomb of the 6th, Harvey threw another 1-2-3 inning in the top of the 7th. Chad Qualls relieved Fernandez in the 7th, ending Jose's day. He threw 6 innings of 1-run ball, striking out 7. Qualls worked around a hit to throw a scoreless inning. 7 innings in the books, and the game stood at 1-1. A very low-scoring game, as expected, with 2 aces on the mound. In the top of the 8th, Brandon Lyon relieved Matt Harvey. His final line was 7 innings, one run allowed, and six strikeouts. The two reasons for baseball fans to watch this game are no longer relevant. Fernandez and Harvey departed, and now all that was left were two bottom of the barrel ball clubs duking it out. I applaud anyone that didn't leave the stadium at this point. Fantastic outings for both starters, but now with each team's bullpen in charge now, we can hopefully see some runs scored. Henshevarria let off the inning with a single, and with no outs, stole second base. Once Harvey left, all it took was one batter for the Marlins to get a runner in scoring position. During the current at bat, I saw this graphic and am quite fond of it. Greg Dobbs walked to set first and second no outs. One pitch into the next at bat and Henshevarria was caught stealing. The second time this game, he got out after being in scoring position. Juan Pierre would ground into a double play to end the inning. In the bottom of the eighth, the Mets put two on with two outs, but Justin Turner flew out to end the inning. Bobby Parnell came in to pitch the ninth and threw a scoreless inning. In the bottom of the ninth, a leadoff single and a sacrifice set up the winning run in scoring position with one out. 
Mets manager Terry Collins sent lefty Mike Baxter to pinch hit for the pitcher. Marlins manager Mike Redmond then brought in lefty pitcher Dan Jennings to pitch. Collins responded by bringing in his backup catcher Anthony Recker to pinch hit with current catcher and slow as molasses runner John Buck on second base. I get the winning run is on second, but that's a good way to burn a player. Since Baxter was announced as the pinch hitter, he technically appeared in this game, and despite never even stepping into the batter's box, he cannot come back into the game since Wrecker pinched hit for him. To top it all off, unless Terry Collins somehow put Wrecker in the game at a position other than catcher, he would have no backup catcher on his bench should the game continue. But hey, odds are, this game won't proceed that long. Maybe Wrecker can pull through and win the game for the Mets. He didn't. Wrecker struck out and Jennings worked around a couple of base runners to send this game to extras. The Mets had two on in back-to-back -back innings but couldn't score a run and so we head to the 10th inning. What is about to happen is a sequence of events so mind-boggling infuriating I wouldn't be surprised if every single fan in the stadium walked out at some point before the final pitch was thrown. This is where the game becomes exhausting to watch and downright silly. In the top of the 10th, Miami had two two-out base runners reach base for Juan Pierre, his third at-bat of the game with a runner on base, and he flew out to end the inning. In the bottom half, the Mets themselves also had two two-out base runners, but John Buck popped out to end the inning. That's three consecutive innings the Mets had two runners on and two of three for the Marlins. Big wasted opportunities to score the go-ahead run. Scott Rice and Greg Burke combined for a scoreless 11th, as did A.J. Ramos in the bomb half. Neither team could score. David Ardsman threw a perfect top of the 12th, and in the bottom of the 12th, the Mets once again had two runners reach base. Daniel Murphy walked to lead off the inning, and David Wright reached on a fielder's choice. Two on and nobody out. The stage was set for the Mets to finally win the pitcher's duel. It's been a frustrating game all day long, with both teams wasting opportunities to score, but the Mets were finally in a great position to do so. Lucas Duda lined out in the following at bat, which allowed Murphy to advance the third, winning around on third base with one out. Twelve long innings of terrible hitting and horrific base running were about to come to a close. The Mets and Marlins had numerous opportunities to put this game away, but failed to do so. New York had two runners on base in the 8th inning, ninth inning, 10th inning, and now 12th inning. Miami had at least one runner reach base in the 8th, 9th, and 10th innings. Despite all the base runners up until this point, both teams managed zero runs during those innings. Remember, the only runs either team scored came in the 2nd and 4th innings. It's as if both teams were trying to give this game away, especially the Mets. Constant runners in scoring position, and out after out after out after out. Entering this at bat, the Mets were 0 for 8 on the day with runners in scoring position. 0 for 8. All New York needed was one hit, one ball in play to bring home the winning run. And Bird hits it out to right. Ozuna toward the line, makes the catch. Here comes Murphy. Here comes the throw by Ozuna. It's going to be close. Murphy runs over Bradley who holds the ball. And he's out and the inning is over. This game was anticipated for the pitcher's duel that was set to take place between Jose Fernandez and Matt Harvey. However, there was a second pitcher's duel, one that didn't start until the 13th inning. For what Ozuna and Brantley did to prolong this game, we are about to see something we may never see again. Two separate pitcher's duels in a single game. This duel was between Miami's Kevin Slowey and New York's Sean Markham. Markham had struggled in the first two months of the season and juggled between the rotation and the bullpen. With New York nearly out of pitchers, he was set to handle as many innings as he could. He threw a 1-2-3 13th inning, off to a good start. In for Miami in the bomb half, Kevin Slowey. Slowey, a starting pitcher, was making his first relief appearance of the season. Miami was also almost out of pitchers. Both teams had used so many relievers, they needed to rely on starters. In the 13th, the Mets once again had two runners reach base, this time with one out. Rick Ankiel popped up and Omar Quintanilla struck out. They couldn't get that run across. Markham allowed a hit, but didn't allow any runs in the top of the 14th inning. In the bomb half, 
Markham came up to bat with two outs and a runner on base. Do you want to guess what happened? Now the 0-2 from Slowy to Markham. And he hit him. Markham hit by the pitch. Another inning with two runners on base. Justin Turner had the chance once again to drive in the go-ahead run, but he grounded out. The Mets had 2-1 in the 8th, 2-1 in the 9th, 2-1 in the 10th, 2-1 in the 12th, 2-1 in the 13th, and 2-1 in the 14th, and 0 runs scored. New York got a runner to reach scoring position with 1 out in the 15th inning. He did not score. The Mets had a runner reach base in the 16th inning. He didn't score either. Justin Turner led off the 17th inning with a double. He wouldn't even make it to third base. In the 18th inning, the Mets once again had two runners reach base with only one out. They could not get the winning run to score. Kevin Slowey was working in and out of trouble every inning. He allowed at least one runner to reach base in every inning he pitched and was able to get out of it each time. Excluding the 11th inning, the Mets had at least one runner reach base in every single inning since the 6th. That's 12 of the last 13 innings with one or more runners on base. Zero runs scored. It's almost silly at this point. I can't fathom this as being legitimate. I am almost fully convinced that the Mets were in cahoots to not score. Both pitchers exchanged 1-2-3 innings in the 19th and this long Saturday afternoon game was going to enter the 20th inning. Reminder that the last run was scored all the way back in the 4th. There have been zero runs scored in almost 16 innings, nearly two full games worth of the worst hitting you could watch. As bad as the Mets were hitting wise, the Marlins have no excuse either. They had at least one runner reach base in the 9th, 10th, 11th, 14th, and 15th innings and could not manage a run either. And before anyone says anything, Kevin Slowey and Sean Markham were not top level pitchers. If anything, they were both not good. Both of these teams hitting was that bad. I get that these two teams weren't good in 2013, but how is it that the Mets and Marlins each managed a run off each other's ace pitcher but nothing against the bullpen? Well, someone has to win. In the top of the 20th, a Denny Hencheveria, who twice got out due to base running blunders, who was batting 186 entering today, got his third hit of the day and drove in Placido Polanco to take a 2-1 lead. Markham finished the inning without allowing another run and the Marlins led 2-1 entering the bomb of the 20th inning. Somehow, they managed to save their closer as Steve Ciszek came in to try and record the final three outs. He struck out Rick Ankiel for the first out, got Omar Quintanilla the ground out, and Daniel Murphy came to bat with two outs, the same player who collided with Marlins catcher Rob Brantley six innings prior. He drove one out to left as far as he could hit it, but it fell short of the wall and the game finally came to an end. 20 innings, 155 plate appearances, 41 players used, and 6 hours and 25 minutes of the worst hitting Major League Baseball has ever seen. The Marlins managed 15 hits and 2 walks. The Mets managed 13 hits, 9 walks, and 2 hit by pitches. All of those base runners with almost nothing to show for it. For how bad the hitting was on both sides, the Marlins actually made the most of what they had. In 20 innings, they had 4 at-bats with runners in scoring position. 4. And you know something? They went 2 for 4 in those at-bats. The Mets finished the game going 0 for 19 with runners in scoring position. 0 for 19. 6 times in the 8th inning or later did New York get at least 2 runners to reach base and not one of them scored. They left 22 men on base. Among every game in baseball history in which a team scored 1 or 0 runs in a game, those 22 men left on base tied the record for most men left on base. This game started with a 6 inning performance by Jose Fernandez and a 7 inning one by Matt Harvey. Those two pitchers didn't even lead their teams in innings pitched today. Kevin Slowey, who picked up the win, pitched 7 shutout innings in relief, striking out 8 batters. Sean Markham, who got the loss, pitched 8 innings in relief, striking out 7 and allowing 1 run. Forget Fernandez and Harvey, Slowey and Markham was the real duel today. They combined for 15 innings and 1 run allowed, while Harvey and Fernandez combined for 13 innings and 2 runs allowed. Looking at the box score of this game, it's almost infuriating. I can't fathom this as being legitimate. I am almost fully convinced 
that the Mets were intentionally trying not to score. I have no way of checking, but I would not be surprised if this is the record for most at-bats in a single game with runners in scoring position without getting a hit. 19 chances, 0 hits. Somehow, there were people still in the stands when the final out was recorded. For anyone who sat through 20 innings of the most unclutch, miserable hitting I've ever seen, bless you all. Will we see another team play a baseball game this unclutch ever again? It's a tall order. Given enough at-bats, even the worst hitting team would manage a few hits with runners in scoring position. The Mets in this game were just something special.